Greetings and welcome to Judgment Begins in the House. It is February 9th, 2024. Uh, 5784 is the year on the Hebraic calendar. And I'm just grateful to the Lord to be here. I'm going to go ahead and pray us in and share the word. Father, we thank you for the ability to be in your presence today. We thank you for uh, just the gift of life. We thank you for a time of rest and restoration. And we invite you into this place now. We invite you because everything we do is unto you. So Lord, fill the room, fill our hearts for each person watching who is abiding in and seeking to abide in your presence. Make us aware of your presence day by day and draw us into a fresh revelation about who you are. I know I pray that regularly, Lord, but I'm persistent because I know that there's more of you. There's more for who you created us to be, for your word says that Yeshua came, that we would have life and have life more abundantly. So walk us along that path. We are saying yes to you and no to the things of the world. We thank you in all things. And I ask you, Lord, that you be glorified in this message and this word, that you not allow it to fall to the ground, but that it accomplishes everything and only what you intend for it to accomplish. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. This word is from January 2nd, and I'm going to ask you all who will listen to this word and really seek the Lord about it to open up Isaiah chapter 33. And I will say that there are many who no longer read the Old Covenant or the Old Testament, they believe that it is no longer relevant or vi uh, viable or necessary. And to that, I would just say that I, I won't debate what is um, insanity because that would say that one means or thinks that two thirds of the Bible is irrelevant. There are lessons in the Old Testament. Uh, there are precepts. There are things about God's character. There are prophecies yet to be fulfilled. There's so much in the Old Testament that is necessary for us to understand who we are in God's story and what things are going to unfold in our lifetime and to come. So for those of you who are willing, again, who have um, ears to hear and a heart to receive, open up Isaiah 33, and I'm going to share this word with you. This word is again from January 2nd, and it was during third watch of the night. And I was sitting and just really kind of warring, warring for uh, peace to hear from the Lord clearly. There was clearly a lot of um, spiritual warfare going on, a lot of things happening, both in the natural and in the spiritual. And I needed to war to enter into the Lord's rest on this particular morning. And when I finally was able to sit, the Lord said to me, Isaiah 33. And so again, after confirming that I was hearing the Lord's voice and it wasn't a product of this natural and spiritual warfare I was um, encountering to find peace in my secret place, I read Isaiah 33. And I asked the Lord what he's saying to me, what he's saying to us, because I am a member of the body of Yeshua. Um, what he's saying to us, this channel is judgment begins to the at, in the house of God. Judgment begins at the house. And the Lord said, and I'm quoting, thus says the Lord, this is what is happening. You shall see it and know that I am God. So I want to give you a summary of my, and this is a very sophomoric, quick summary of Isaiah 33. But I'm sharing this with you because the Lord says Isaiah 33, what we read in Isaiah 33, what was shadowed there is what is happening today. 
Isaiah 33 speaks about God's recompense and the woe, the turmoil, the trouble, the judgment that will come to the wicked. The ones he calls the destroyer who will now be destroyed. And Isaiah 33 also speaks about how in the face of God's judgment, the wise men, the envoys, the leaders of the wicked will be crying out for help, but none will come to them. In the context of our day, the wise men, the envoys, the leaders of the wicked who will be crying out for help under the weight of God's judgment are political leaders, they are world leaders, they are business and industry leaders, they are education leaders, and they are religious leaders, including the religion of Christianity for those who consider it a religion rather than a relationship with a living God. Those are the wicked who will be crying out for help, but none will come to them. The sinners in Zion, also spoken about in Isaiah 33, the sinners in Zion, trembling with fear of God because of God's refining, judging fire, represent the body of Christ who are compromising, who are more likely to support things that God hates than to stand and accept the world's hatred and the world mocking for standing what for what God hates, for standing with the Lord rather than against him, for not straddling the fence. Only those whose life is right, whose speech is straight, who scorns getting rich by extortion and who shakes his hand free of bribes can live in the presence of God burning fire. That's verse 14 through 15 in the message translation. So the word today and it it is a clear word because in Isaiah 33 Isaiah is speaking to the people of Israel he's speaking to those who God called his own he's saying this is what is happening you shall see it and know that I am God so as we look out on the landscape and we have unrepentant and prideful leaders who identify as Christians being exposed, doubling down on their contention that they are righteous and that they have nothing to uh, repent for, nothing to turn away from, that they are still qualified to be leaders, envoys, wise men in the body of Christ, we are seeing now the beginning of God's judgment where they will be crying out for help, but none will come to them, according to Isaiah 13. For those who identify as pastors of denominations and pastors of organized groups who are being paid handsomely, having money funneled to them in various ways to stand against what God loves and what his word says and who God loves be that the preborn children, be that women, children, and even 
men who are kidnapped and trafficked, be that followers of Yeshua who are being persecuted and tortured and maimed throughout the nations, be that the house of Israel in all the places of her dispersion. So the Israel, i.e. Jewish diaspora, all of you who say that you are representing Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai, Yahweh Yiri, or as we say in the country, Jehovah Jireh, but you are being funded and you are the mouthpiece for organizations who are espousing things that God hates, things that he consider an abomination. Unrepentantly, this word is for you. Verse 19 in Isaiah 13 says, You will not see the intransient, intransigent people. Intransigent people. Intransigent meaning people who are refusing to moderate. As I was sitting there, the Lord said, especially the extreme position, like Islamic Jihad, violent Hinduist, and the radical Jews who hate Christians and seek to harm Christians, right? Because God is no respecter of persons. He hates all hatred. And what he's saying is, everyone who is living these things out, espousing abortion, espousing mutilation of children, espousing child rape, espousing theft, espousing edicts from government that take a person's right away to make decisions for their children, their own children, and doing so under the banner of being representative of Yahweh, the Most High God, and particularly under the banner of being Christian. We are living in the time where the Lord is saying, the destroyer, you all, destroyers, who have destroyed families, destroyed innocence, destroyed childhood, destroyed just good <laughs> in all the ways that you're sowing wickedness. You are the ones who will now be destroyed. The Lord says, this is what is happening. You meaning we, he was saying you to me, Maverine, meaning we will see this destruction for the wise, the envoys, the leaders of the wicked. And we, through seeing that, will know that I am God, says the Lord. I shudder to think that we have gotten to a place where people's hearts are so hardened that they don't hear warning, that they truly believe that they can outmaneuver, outpreach, outshout God, and run from him. When I asked the Lord where this is happening, Right? Because we have so much going on in America. It can certainly only be a word for America, but our, our God is not an American first God. Hear me. Our God is not an America first God. He loves all nations equally. 
So I asked the Lord where this is happening. And the Lord says, in all the earth. But the spotlight shall be on my land. The Lord's land, his first land, where he'll return, is Israel. He says, the earth, the world, will know that I am. I change not. I avenge the wicked works of the enemy and restore the righteous. My hand shall accomplish this, says the Lord, for all the world to see. None of their leaders will be able to escape. And nations that harbor the wicked, giving them refuge and honor, will be destroyed. Their people tortured for the sake of their greed. The righteous will be recompensed and the wicked will be laid low. And then the Lord said these nations, Iran, Djibouti, others, and the more. A short time later, as I was just really battling in the spirit, and I understand a bit why, because this is a specific word and I've not spoken so specifically about specific ideologies and nations before. The Lord said to me, and I believe is saying to all of us who are willing to pick up the mantle, to proclaim my name in all the earth. And so today, tonight, I proclaim the name that is above every other name. I pro pro proclaim the name of Yahweh, Adonai. I proclaim the name of Yeshua, also known as Jesus. I proclaim the name that is above every other name. And I say to you all, who consider yourselves wise, who consider yourselves envoys, who consider yourselves leaders in religion, be that the religion of Christianity or these other religions that are exacting wickedness and evil, unrepentant. What we are seeing now is only the beginning of the Lord recompensing your wickedness for what you've done because you have not turned away from your desire to destroy. You still have time because you are breathing. There are some of you who the Lord has shown me he's given over to a hard heart. He's given over to a reprobate mind because you have not relented in the wickedness. But this is a very clear two level or two side word for those in the house of the living God who are doing wickedness in the sight of the Lord and continuing what we're seeing now in your exposure, what we're seeing now in some of you having committed suicide, some of you having experienced seemingly out of nowhere loss of life that's the beginning it's going to intensify because the lord is purifying his bride the other pillar for this word has to do with the lord saying this is for all the earth this is to all the earth not just to christians but to everyone in the earth who is espousing wickedness under the name of God. Now, I know your God is not the one and true God. But if the God that you say you serve is all the people around you see, then you are maligning who is the true and living God, the one who is love. And he says, I avenge 
the wicked works of the enemy, big E enemy, Satan, and restore the righteous. My hand shall accomplish this for all the world to see. None of their leaders will be able to escape, and the nations that harbor the wicked, giving them refuge and honor, will be destroyed. Their people tortured for the sake of their greed. The righteous will be recompensed, and the wicked will be laid low. And he spoke specifically these nations, Iran, Syria, and Djibouti, others, comma, the more. So I'm speaking this out because there's power in speaking things out. I'm declaring that our God arise and his enemies be scattered. I'm decreeing that the Lord will recompense the wicked in the earth because Satan is under his feet and therefore under our feet. I thank you that God will vindicate his name. And I thank you that he is empowering and strengthening us to proclaim the name that's above every other in all the places that he will send us. For those of you seeking to go deeper and to prepare for what is coming, because it's going to touch all of us, as we're seeing now, especially in uh, churchdom, it's going to touch all of us. Some of the biggest names, and God is not finished, there are more. Sit with him. Sit with him specific to this warning in Isaiah 33 and ask him to reveal things to you. Put off all of your hardened opinion and doctrine and ask and allow the Lord to teach you, to lead you by his spirit into all truth. Because we'll need to know these things to know who he is and to have made a decision about where we will stand, on what side we will stand, because we can't straddle the fence. As, as this channel's description says, there truly is no gray area in the body of Christ and our faith work. So if you've unfortunately been taught that the Old Testament is irrelevant for you and for today and for the things to come, I encourage you to read Isaiah 33. I will say that I thank the Lord that he is trusting me, entrusting me to share things that I am still growing in deeper understanding about, but I know his voice. And it's been amazing because in obedience with saying things when he tells me to say it without requiring him to make me understand, right? Without telling God I need him to make me understand who he is before I obey. What I'm learning and have experienced is that I get more revelation. I understand him better. I become more intimate with him in relationship. He wants the same for all of us who call on the name of Yeshua and believe. He wants the same for all people to come into relationship with him. So this is our charge. This is our word for this week. Um, I just don't know what else to say except to say what we are experiencing and will experience is unlike anything that our parents or grandparents or even great parents, grandparents have ever experienced. So we cannot rely solely on their understanding to know who God is and what he is doing or to be prepared for what is coming. Now is a good time to put off any distraction. Who cares? Who cares what sister so-and-so wears or doesn't wear? There's so much more important things for us to be um, to be committed to 
and to be walking in than those things of the flesh. And I am just hoping that the Lord continues to mature me and mature all of us in those areas. I thank you all for listening. I pray God's blessing on all of you. I thank you that you all are willing to go deeper. And I say before I close this out, as I've said in another video, I pray over every comment and I will not tolerate the spirit of witchcraft in any form in the comments. So if you've left a comment and you've seen that comment blocked, you know that you should seek the Lord because you're operating in a spirit that is not of God. The power of death and life comes from our mouths. What you speak out toward other people has consequence. And so any word spoken out toward me, toward the ministry that the Lord is asking me to walk in, toward the body of Christ, and especially toward the living God and his Holy Spirit, I not only block from showing in the comments, but I, according to Isaiah 54, 7, condemn those words. And I set my mind on Christ so that he keeps me in perfect peace. You will not sow seeds of witchcraft and hatred. You will not freely function as an emissary of Satan on this channel and toward the people of the living God. Because I trust God to teach me how to stand and have done, having done everything I can to stand. But he goes ahead of me and he is my rear guard. And in the same way a mother need, needed to uh, warn me several decades ago. We have to give an account for every word we say. every word, an account to the Lord. So before you begin to call people or to assign characteristics to people that didn't come from the Holy Spirit, I encourage you again, zip your lip because you don't have to worry about me. What does it matter for anyone who could potentially hurt our body? We need to be concerned about and fear the one who has control over our soul. So watch your mouths, people. I trust God in all of this, and I thank you all who have listened to the end and will seek the Lord in this and desire to go deeper. I praise the Lord with just, oh my God, I cannot imagine, I could not imagine how good his love is, but he is good always, always. So again, I say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Amen, amen, and amen.